Hello class, today we're doing lesson 11.1, which is on mean. So first we're gonna look at the intro. Tina and her friends downloaded songs for six weeks as shown in this table. How many total songs were downloaded? So we see this word total, and if you didn't know to add, please know to add. So we're gonna add them up. I like to add them in groupings because it makes them easier. Six and four become 10. 9 and 1 become 10. We already have a 10 and we have a 12. That's 10, 10, 10, 12. That turns into 42. You, of course, can add them in whatever way you want, but that was just an easy way I saw. On average, we're going to come to see this word. How many songs did they download each week? So we're going to put our total number of songs and the total number of weeks that they, uh, that they downloaded for. And we find out that they downloaded an average of seven songs per week. So on the number line, draw an arrow that points to the average right there and plot the number of songs downloaded on the number line. So she's downloaded 12 songs. She's downloaded, let me use a big dot. She downloaded 12, she's downloaded 10, nine, six, four, and one. So those are the songs that she's downloaded. And if you look, that average is kind of towards, it's in the middle of them. It's not in the exact middle. And that is an important note. But as we can see, it's a good representation of all of them. Then how far below the average is one? So how far below it? It is six below. Is four it is three below, six is one below, above the average, here it's two above, above it here it's three above, and above it here it's five above. It says, what is the sum of the distance, sum means add, between the average and the points below the average? So what is the sum of the distance between the average and the points below the average? So if we were to add up the below the average, six, three, and one, the sum is 10. If we were to add up above the uh, average, two, three, five, we also get 10. So for both of them, seven is uh, the distance from all of the data points above seven is 10 and all of the values below seven is 10. So seven is kind of like that balancing point. We see seven when it's got a value of 10, the weight of 10 and 10 on each of its sides. I feel like this part makes it a little bit more confusing, so I don't like the concept of this. I really just prefer the fact that we learn what a mean is. So copy this into your notebook. The mean of a data set is the sum of the data divided by the number of pieces of data. It is the balance point for the data set. So we see this sum and then we see divided. That means we add and then we divide. Sum of the data, so that's we count the numbers, and then we divide it by the number of numbers we had. Sounds a little bit confusing, but on the previous page, we found that single number to describe the number of songs downloaded each week. This average or mean summarizes the data in a single number. I like to remember that it's called the mean and that it's the average because on average, people are mean. So we're going to look at this. Find the mean number of representatives for the four states shown in the pictograph. It's called a pictograph because it is a graph with little pictures. So here, it wants us to find the mean number of representatives. What we have to do is we have to add up the numbers and then divide by the amount of numbers. So you're probably thinking, oh, that doesn't make sense because there's already one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna divide and get the number of one, but no. We're gonna be adding up these numbers and dividing by the amount of data points. So what we know is that there are four different states. So in the end, we're gonna be dividing by four and we wanna find the average number total. So we're gonna add them all up. So in this case, we have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Another six. 
So if we add all of those up, what we get is 32. So then we divide 32 by four, and for our answer, we get eight. So on average, each state has eight representatives. This can be seen in another way too, where if we simply moved the representatives and made it so that they all lined up in even sections. I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna put him here. I'm gonna take this two, I'm gonna put them there. I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna put them there. And now if we look, we now have eight for all of our different categories. So there's an average of eight. Here, the dot plot shows the recorded high temperatures for six days in Little Rock, Arkansas. Find the mean temperature. So it's already showing it for us, but we're gonna go over how we do it. Here are the temperatures that we've plotted. So we're gonna add all of our numbers up. We have 45, we have it twice. So we've got 45 and 45. Then we have 47, that 49, 50, and 52. And how many numbers did we have? How many dots? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we divide it by six at the end. We add them all up and divide and then simplify. So we find out that the mean temperature, the average temperature is 48 degrees. So all the data values can be summarized with that single number, 48. If you are asking for what your grade is, your grade is an average made up of all of the things that you've contributed. Essentially, it's adding up all of the points and dividing them over the number of assignments the way that it gets set up. So our grades are a great example of an average, of a mean. Let's look at this one. The dot plot shows the number of runs a baseball team had for each game of a four game series. Find the mean number of runs for the series. So in this case, with the number of runs. We want to look at what the numbers are and what our plot points are. So in this case, we have four different data items. See that because I've got those four different plot points. One, two, three, four. So we know that we're going to be dividing it overall by four. Then we have to add the data together, the sum of the data. So one plus three is four, plus four is eight, plus four is 12. So I get 12 fourths or simply three. The mean number of runs for the series is three. So same one here. We look, the number of minutes uh, Mary L spent talking on her cell phone each month for the past five months were 494, 502, 486, 690, and 478. Suppose the mean for six months was 532 minutes. How many minutes did she talk on her cell phone during the sixth month? So this is when we take a reverse approach to it. Here we know the mean, we just don't know one of our numbers. So it gives us this different kind of equation. Previously, we knew all of these numbers and we knew how many they were and we found out what it was equal to. In this case, since we already know what it's equal to, what we're gonna be doing is essentially isolating the variable. So let's look. We know that the total is 532 minutes. That is the mean for six months. So it's 532. And how many months, the number of points we collected, the data points goes at the bottom. So six. Then we also know five of those months. So if we added them all together, we have 494 plus 502 plus 486 plus 690 plus 478 plus x. So that's where we don't know it because we have this plus x here at the end. So we're left with a problem that looks like this. And now you're thinking to yourself, oh my god, this is so complicated. But it's not. We've already done this. What we do? We isolate the variable. So First things first is we want to get rid of this division. So to get rid of the division, we multiply. That cancels out. And 532 times 6, we get for 2, 6, 5, 0 plus x equals 
3192. So 2,650 plus x is equal to 3,192. In this case, our last step for isolating the variable is we're going to subtract this number from both sides because as we can see, there would be that equal sign. So we're going to subtract that number. And what we get, I'm going to put it up here, we find out that it is 542. I don't like the way that they showed it in this book, which is why I really wanted to show you this method. If you're ever given a problem where you don't know something, it's following that same pattern, but we actually get to see it with our hands. Here they did the multiply it by six, but we want to know why. This is why, because of the way that it would be set up. It was the numbers we knew plus our unknown number divided by the total number of numbers is equal to our mean. And then we go backwards from there. So Marielle talked for 542 minutes during the sixth month. So we're going to do page 8, 10, and 8, 11, A, and B together. So for problem A, the table shows the number of CDs a group of friends brought, uh, bought. Find the mean number of CDs the group bought. So in this case, we have how many different numbers? We're going to add them all together. So 3 plus 0 plus 4 plus 2 plus 6. When we add all of those together, we get 15. Now, here's something. Do we have four numbers or do we have five numbers? That's the question. So I want you guys to think about that just for a second and then I'll tell you. So we actually have five numbers. I know that it seems strange, but even though one of the numbers is zero, it still counts. So this friend is still one of the friends. She bought zero CDs. So we have 15 CDs that had been split amongst five different friends. So the answer for that one is three, three CDs. The blue dot plot below, just the dot plot below, shows the number of books Deanna read each week of a reading challenge. Find the mean number of books she read. I always like to start with our denominator, just our data points, how many, so we don't mess that up. Here we see one, two, three, four, five, six. So we know it's going to be six plot points. If we add them all up then, one, three, 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 four, four. Here, what we get is one, nine, eight. This becomes 18. When we divide, we find out again that the answer is three. There's three books each week. So we're going to do the guided practice together's numbers one and two on page 812. The dot plot shows the number of beads sold. Find the mean number of beads. Once again, I always like to start with my denominator. I see here there are six plot points. Let's add them all up. Five, so I'm going to put the number just below it because it helps me visualize. Five. 7 times 3 is 21, 8 times 2 is 16. So if I added all of those together, 5 plus 21 plus 16, I get 42. And so the mean number of beads sold was 7. And if we're looking here, we can kind of see that it's following a nice trend. Look at that. 7 here had a lot of them. It was in the middle. Back here, 3 had the most. It was kind of in the middle. We see this. But you can't always just rely on that. You can't just eyeball it and say, oh, seven has a lot, so I'm going to pick seven. Or it's between there. We have to do it this certain way. It's important. So the table shows the greatest depths of four of the five oceans in the world. If the average greatest depth is 8.094 kilometers, 8 and 94 thousandth kilometers, what is the greatest depth of the Southern Ocean? So in this one too, we want to set it up that same way that I was showing you before. It's a lot, lot, lot easier if we set it up like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it up together. So we've got our different oceans. We know what our Pacific Ocean is. We, want the, we have the Atlantic, we have the Indian, and we have the Arctic, and we have the Southern. That's not a five. And we have the southern. So in that case, right there, we're split up 
five different oceans. It shows five different oceans. Now we only know the answer to four of them. So we're gonna plug those into what we know. So for the Pacific Ocean, we know that it is 10 and 92 hundredths. We know for the Atlantic Ocean, it is 9.22 hundredths. For the Indian Ocean, I'm just gonna write this whole thing out. So I wrote it all out, Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Arctic, and this is our Southern, our unknown. We don't know what it is yet. So I wanna add all of these values together now. I'm gonna use my calculator, and when I add all of my values together, I get 33 and 23 hundredths. It's not my end answer though, because I still have that unknown that I'm trying to solve. So now I have that unknown that I'm trying to solve, but we've gotten a lot closer. We've added up all of our data points that we can. That's called combining like terms. But we have this unlike term that we've got to combine. Then we know at the end it's going to be equal to this. So it's going to be equal to 8.023. Oh, I don't know where I got the 2, 3 from. 9, 4. It's easier for you than flipping back and forth when you have this in your book. So we have that split between them. Now... The steps that we do again, we want to isolate that variable. We want to get this x all by itself. So the first thing we have to do is we have to get rid of what is what x is being divided by. So we're going to multiply, do the opposite, each side by 5. So for this side, we now get 33.23 plus x. Do not feel the urge to multiply 5 on the top. It's cross-canceling. It's canceling out with that 5 on the bottom. 5 times 33.2 3 plus x divided by 5, 5 times 5, or 5 divided by 5, is it's 1, it goes away. And then for this other one, we have the 8.094 times 5 gives us 40 and 47 hundredths. Yet again, the last thing that we do to isolate our variable is we're going to be doing the subtraction. If you notice again, it makes sense because we see negative 33.23 is equal to negative 33.23. We see that makes sense right there. Here, when I'm subtracting, this cancels out. I am now left with x equals, and I'm doing the subtraction here. I get 4, 2, 7. So my answer is 7 and 24 hundredth kilometers deep. Great. So for your homework, it is just going to be page 813, numbers 1 through 4. What you are going to do is you are going to hold on to all of your homework assignments and you're going to turn them in on the day of the test. I will go over more of how we will do that. But for now, this is your homework and I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow.